In 2019, Kevil Wingo died when he was in custody at Cobb County Detention Center. Wingo had complained of a very painful stomach ache, and he even kept repeating that he could not breathe. Unfortunately, the guards and even the head nurse all thought that he was faking being sick so he could go to the hospital. They decided to move him into an isolated cell. That way they couldn't hear him yelling anymore. One of the nurses working that night asked the head nurse if she could go take his vitals. She was told no, and after begging for seven hours, he would then pass away. Most of the people working that night ended up having a discussion with the police, but the head nurse, Annaline Weiser, was the one in charge, and she had a full interrogation. Okay. Um, yeah, we're in here to talk about the incident that happened the other day at the jail. Okay. Mr. Wingo. Yes, Mr. Okay. Wingo. Um, we've watched the video, went okay. back through everything. Okay. Um, now we're going to start back when you came into shift that morning, okay? okay. All right. Um, and we've, you know, we've talked to other people, so we've, you know, watched the videos. So mm -hmm. We've got a better understanding mm -hmm. now of what happened, what went on, mm -hmm. as before we did the other day. You know, we went into it. We, we didn't have video that day. We were just doing our preliminary interviews, okay. and this is just something we follow up and, you know, do more interviews after this just to, for our investigation, okay? Sure. So that's what this is about. Um, so that morning you came in to shift. Mm -hmm. Could you explain again, you know, what was passed on to you, his behavior, sure. um, and just, you know, kind of slow down for me so we can understand it, so we can, you know. Okay. Okay, so it was a Sunday morning. I came on duty at uh, 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. and the night nurse, uh, Yvette Burton, she handed over to me, and she said that Mr. Wingo was in the night, he was disorderly, and they were going to put him in close ups. She told me she was going to put him in close ups. I said, okay, don't worry, I'll look at him, and if he needs to go, I'll put him in close ups. Um, she went home, uh, gave me a report, went home. Um, I went and sat at the desk. At that time, there was no commotion. He was in room number eight, okay, okay. which is just a yeah. little distance. There was no commotion. And, and at that time, you were where were you sitting in reference to room eight? I was sitting near the uh, officer's desk. Okay. So I sit there, which is about one, two, I would say three doors away from it. He was in eight, okay. seven, six, and five, so just directly in front of you. Okay, there was no commotion. Then what happened is, what well, I got up is, um, the gentleman next to, his bed was at the back, and there were one, two, three bunks, and here's the door, the door was here. And the gentleman on the, I would say on the right hand side, was the, I can't remember his name, Watkins, I can't remember his name, he got up to go to the bathroom, and Mr. Wingo got into his bed, so when he came back, um, he said, hey, this guy's in my bed, okay, and Marshall was on duty, she was the deputy at the time. And um, I didn't go yet. That was the first time that I went there. Um, so we saw the commotion, and he was loud at the time. And this what this guy was, I think it was Mr. Watkins, if I remember, said, I can't remember his name. I think he said, get him, out, get him out of my bunk. Okay. He got up and he went back to his bunk, Mr. Winker. Then later on, let me see, later on, he came and he moved in between the two bunks, and he was lying there, and that's when the gentleman, Mr. Watkins, I think his name was Watkins, called and said, get this guy away from me because he stinks, and that's when I got up and I went to the window to see, mm -hmm. and I said to Mr. Wingo, Mr. Wingo, go back to your bunk, this is not your bunk, and he scooted back and he went back to his bunk, okay, then I went back, um, I went back, and then later on, this guy went to the bathroom again. And that's when Mr. Wingo went into his bed again. And that's when Marshall said, I have to move him to close homes or move him out. And she told him to come. Um, I, was sta I wasn't standing there. I was standing at a distance, I think, behind the counter. I was standing behind the counter. Um, and Marshall took him out. And she called Sergeant Gordon to come because at that stage he was rowdy and loud. Um, Gordon took him. Uh, handcuffed him, got him up, he stood against the window and he handcuffed him 
and I think he moved him to the seat in front of the desk, and he was loud, he was talking, um, and then they said, uh, um, Gordon said, then uh, Major Harris came, and Gordon said we were going to take him to the annex. And he walked to about room number 11, and then they said, okay, I didn't see it, they said that uh, they're going to put him in a wheelchair, and they moved him to a wheelchair. All right, all right. Let's go back to when you were sitting at the desk over there. Okay. Um, and this is you know, right when you came in. Was anybody saying anything to you? Did you hear him over the intercom say he couldn't breathe? Did any other nurses advise you of this? No. Nobody no. said anything to you while you were sitting at the desk? No. 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 He was rowdy and he was loud. Okay. He was rowdy but, and he was Yeah, loud. I understand that. But what I'm saying is... He didn't the say nurses, I but, but the nurses that were in the infirmary, signed out to the infirmary, nurses, techs, whatever they were, did any of those say... What to me, yes, to you, you that he needed to be checked because he could not. No, you, no. you don't recall no, that? No, I don't recall that. No, not at all. No, he was rowdy, he was loud. Um, explain rowdy. Um, okay, he was loud, he was, um, I don't know what he was saying, he was just disruptive, loud, and shouting. And um, I can't remember exactly what he was saying. And that's why Marshall said, I think I'm going to put him in close-ups. So Marshall because, said that she was going to put him in close-ups. Yes. She said, I'll, I'll move him so that he can go to close-ups. That's when she called Gordon, because he was rowdy, and because that guy wanted to hit him, because he was on his butt. And he said, if you don't take him away, we're going to, we're going to hit him. Okay. And Marshall moved when, him out. When was the last time his vials were taken? Listen, probably the night before, I think. I don't know when... If it does it, I think they do it about. Um, I don't know what time they do it. Uh, we only do it at about eight o'clock. But if he's disruptive, you can't. I don't go near them as far as vitals are concerned. I, only I, for I, 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 I have seen the video yeah. and I didn't see the disruptive part. So, oh, um, yeah. Uh, just to be honest. Oh. So, um, in the video, there are people that we can see that our employees, that they're concerned about him in the room, sure. and they stated that he fell over in the room. No, no, he no. didn't fall at all. Well, I didn't see that, and he never told me. Neither did the other inmates say that he fell at all. He was lying between the two bunks. I don't know, maybe he thought that it was the bed, or he just wanted to lie there. And the only reason I went there is because that gentleman, the Mr. on the right-hand side said, move him because he stinks, we don't want him here. And I asked him to go back. Did any of the nurses say that he what? fell? No. To you? Not to me. No, not to me. At all. Would it be surprising if some of them did say that they told you that it I would be surprised. Yeah, because I went there. I went to his room. I don't know if you saw that in the video. Yeah, I saw okay. that. I did go to the room. Yeah, you did. I, went, I did go to the room and asked him to move back. No. When you asked him to move back, what was his, how did he move back? He moved back with his hands onto the bank. Did that look a little bit no. like not normal hands the way he was No, he had, he had a white pants. When I asked him to move, he moved back. He scooted back with his hands. Okay. Um, when, when you were talking to him, what, what was his complaint at the, at the dorm? He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't say anything at the window. All I said to him is, Mr. Wilmay, move back. And I still went like this and said, move back to your bunk. That was all. He didn't say anything to anything. me, like I've got a headache, or I feel sick, or I'm vomiting, or anything. Okay. Well, why were you asking him to move back? Because it, the gentleman cause... said, if you don't move him, he's lying. You know, I went because the gentleman said he's lying there between, he's lying there on the floor, and he stinks. That's why I went there and said, please move back. And we did. I, I guess what I was getting at with that is the deputy, why wasn't she over there? Why did you notify her that he was there was going to be a fight? Or because you, know, you know normally if, if something like that's going to happen, you know, okay, we may have to step in to break that fight up instead of you just going to the door and asking him to move uh, back. So that's that's why I was asking. I don't know. I didn't even ask Marshall. I mean, she just. I think she came the second time that he lay on the bunk. She came and she said, "I think I better just move him to close arms. Let's move him out of the room." And um, 
you said that if somebody's acting out, you don't take their vitals. I mean, we, we've seen the video, and he's, I have yet to see him throughout the video acting out at all. Well, I think. Um, and, you know, there's people, has, did anybody mention about taking his vitals to you? Do you remember that? When somebody yeah. said that to you? No. I mean, you see, take his vitals. No. Okay. No. I went over there because he was loud, okay? Um, and because of Cassidy was lying in between the two bunks. Yes, and he continued being loud. So, explain loud to me. Okay, like, he was explain, talking... Explain like how he was... He was, he was talking loudly and i have been already warned that he's going to go to close up because of his disrupt, disruptive behavior in the night. Okay, and I did so say to him, I will take care of him. If I have to move him, I'll move him to close ups. If I have to. So you don't think you were just coming to an assumption since you'd already been warned about that, that, you know, he was acting out? Or, well, maybe, you know, maybe I was warned, okay, yeah. maybe, you know, be careful, you know? Yeah. Maybe, but I mean, why yeah. should we him out? Because he was, he was disrupted, which allowed everybody's fun. Okay. Um, and we do want to fight. No, you don't want to fight. Sure. Uh, I understand the hard time recalling that no one stated his medical mm -hmm. emergency to you that mm -hmm. um, and, and think about this where you know while you're sitting at the computer mm -hmm. um, you're telling me that no one made a comment to you about him not being able to breathe no I promise you nobody no one okay. I'm not lying I promise you okay um, and nobody, you're telling me nobody made a comment um, to check his vitals. No. Do you know what his oxygen level was um, no. when he came in? No. You don't, you don't, don't recall? Okay. Uh, I don't recall that. I know they did the vitals the night before. Okay. Well, and what happened? What did he die from? What? It's still on our uh, investigation. Still on. Yeah, it's still on our investigation. Okay. Um, but we're trying to conduct our investigation and we have information um, based on video okay. and witness statements um, that there was a lot more that went on. We, we, got, yeah. we have to, uh, not only do we look at stuff, but we got to find out step by step sure. everything that, that happened to us. So, sure. we, so why was he down there? Because he was detoxing from opiates. He has IV heroin and he snorts. Was there, heroin and cocaine. Was there anything else he, that was down there, or complaints that he was down there for? Mm -mm. Not that I know. His no. ulcer. I just know it was opiate. In, it was yeah. opiate detox. How about an ulcer? Because that's what that's what he went down for was an ulcer. Oh no, nobody told me anything about an ulcer. No. Is that because she, when she handed over to me, she obviously admitted him. When she handed over to me, she said he's for opiate uh, detox and he does IV heroin, snorts it, and mm -hmm. snorts cocaine. Mm -hmm. You guys normally look through the notes and the charts. You know what? Shifts. I normally do because I'm going to hand over to the doctor. Okay, it was Sunday morning, so uh, I haven't gone through his stuff at all. I think it was room number eight, and we had other people before you. But I do go through it normally to hand over to the doctor. You know, if there's anything else. But if it's good, she really is good, and she normally puts down everything. If there was an ulcer, and right. if maybe really didn't mention it. Wait, you're saying you didn't look at the chart that morning? That I morning did not look at the chart. No, okay. not the chart. I just got the report from her. And this happened, this happened, uh, I came on duty, 6 o'clock she handed over to me at about 20 past 6, I think she left. And at 7 o'clock he was already being loud and getting into somebody else's. Oh. Um, and, you know, you say he's being loud. What, what else was he doing? Besides being loud, what was he? Um, what can I say? Just, as I say, getting into other people's bunk, I suppose, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. Not being obedient, not following the command. You know? I don't know why he wanted to get into the front bunk on the right hand side. I don't know why. Is it, um, you know, when he came out of the dorm? Um, out of the cell? Yeah, out of the cell, after. Um, how was his behavior? How was he? You know, how was how was his his loudness then? 
Well, he was still, I can't remember what he was saying, but he was still loud. Loud. I don't know what he was saying, I can't remember what he was saying, but he was loud. So much so that Marshall, I still said to Marshall, listen, don't open the door, okay? Because I've been in the jail for a long time, and Venables, Deputy Venables was attacked, and I told her years back, don't go into room three, and she did. So again, I said to Marshall, Marshall, don't go in there on your own. Get a sergeant. Don't open the door, okay? Because he's getting, you know, he's causing agitation with the other inmates. You know what I mean? Don't go in there on, that, on your own. And she said, don't worry, I'll just call him to come. And somehow she got him to come to the door. And then she pulled him, no, she didn't pull him out. Uh, Gordon came, and Gordon pulled him out, Sergeant Gordon. Okay. I told her, don't get in there on your own. And after um, Sergeant Gordon gets there, how, how, did, how was his behavior then? Um, I think, I know if he was resisting him, because, um, let me think, Gordon went, uh, got him down and told him to stand up, and he did stand up, and he put his hands on the glass. And Gordon handcuffed him and moved him, I think, to in front of the desk. And he was still loud. I don't know what he was saying, but he was still loud. And then Gordon, and then uh, Major Hayes came. I mean, Harris came, excuse me. Harris came, and they took him to the annex. And he walked until about room 11, and then they said, the criminal, on a wheelchair. And the next time I had anything to do with him was um, the code. And he was in the annex, the extension. Okay. And you're the head nurse over all of the nurses that are down in the infirmary, correct? Mm -hmm. You kind of mm -hmm. tell them what to do, tell them mm -hmm. what not to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, you know, and I must admit, when they called the code, I was like, who can that be? Is that where they were acting out? And I knew he didn't go because the other are in me. I can have it. What conversation did you and uh, Harris have about the move? About who? The move. The move to the. To the. To the, to the annex. Um, the annex is the extension. The extension. Yeah. Um, listen, I have no say in that. I don't. I had no say as to where you go. You know what I mean? They didn't ask me. I mean, that's Marshall and Gordon. They decided to take him to the extension. They could have put him into our close house. Maybe it was full. I don't know what. Marshall decided to take him to the annex. So the extension. You and Major Harris then. Major, so Major Harris. Who, who decides? Are you guys able to put? No. It's been so we, we don't have any input as to where they go. You know? I can't say don't take him, put him in the... I mean, they could have put him in close ups right there. Maybe it was full, you know? I don't know. You know? But we don't have any say. You know? I don't say he can't go. That's really cool because they never say security moves as they did, you know? And then, was any of the times when he was talking, was there anything saying about being in pain? No. Because my view of the video is he's in physical pain and he passed out. Passed out, about we about six times. That's what he was going when, yeah. he was, when he was getting on the when he was getting on the boat. He was passing out. He was he, he did it no. one time. One time he was standing straight up and he went flat straight back. Boom! And a, a nurse saw it. Which nurse? The one sitting at the front counter, and she looked up. And she the said, saw it at the front counter, mm -hmm. Tiana. And he fell right back. Nobody told you that. I promise you, nobody told me that. He passed out about six times. He went, he went, he went to sell. How could he pass out? Did he just come through quickly? You know what I mean? He fell, he fell out, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a fake fall. And no one was watching. Okay, she nobody died. told me that. And then nobody he, told me that he fell. He, nobody he went, told me that. He went to the bathroom multiple times. Who? The, the okay, you know, apparently he was complaining of a female discharge. He had that in an ulcer. I know, don't tell ulcer. I don't know. Okay, I only read that. Blood, blood in the vomit. No. That's what he came out for. Oh. Red Force out. But you know what? He came down for that and then he changed his tune, remember? He came down and said, he hasn't got that anymore. He said, now I've got, uh, pe I think it ended up with penile discharge. But I don't know, he never spoke to me about that at all. 
and nobody told me that he fell straight back, fell down. No. That's, I mean, that's what he was doing when he was when they were talking, complaining about being in his boat. Yeah. Just because he'd be standing there, and all of a sudden he'd just be boom, gone. No, he'd, he'd no, fall you out. don't pass out like that. No, I don't believe he, he did. It. He, he, it's, it's all video, so oh. he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he just passed out and came it's, up. It's very strange. And he'd be out for he'd be yeah. out for a little bit time, and then he'd wake up and then he'd kind of wobble over to his phone. He just, he was Does it show me he comes to the other guy's phone? Mm -hmm. That's right. He's always been in a couple of times. When he's getting into the phone, he's falling into it. He's but not. listen, if you fall and you faint, when you come through, you can't just move off the boat. No, he didn't even be disoriented for a minute. It would take him a second, then he would kind of crawl over to his, to his bed. Just like you were saying, he was backing up some. Yeah. That was after he Did you see him backing up? That's the only time that I, when I went, he saw him backing up. But the, I went over there because the gentleman was saying he's in my bunk. Okay. And when I told him to go back, he followed the command and he went back to his bunk. Right. And then he came and he was between the two bunks. And, I mean, you know, literally what we're trying to find out is what was going on in there. And we, we know it was noticed that he was falling out. Can I say that he was faking it or not? To me, it looked real. And I've seen a lot of people fake it. Um, the, the way he was walking around, hunched over, and just the way he looked, it looked like visible. You know what? He was upset because he wanted to go to the ER. All along, he wanted to go to the ER. Well, kind, of, kind of turned out that he probably needed to. <laughs> Maybe, but you know, no they baby. all want to go to the ER. Yeah, but, they but, really but, do. I know, but this thing, there was right. no baby about it. He Probably. Well, only because he's died. Otherwise, just, uh, well, that's I mean, that's you know what positive I mean. Reason. Okay, and no, but there's five of them that do it, but one sure. of them. Sure. Okay. But that's, but that's no, when you can't see it, but you're going to the ER because they want to go to the ER. You know what I understand mean? That. And when that's he came down, he changed his story. But, so but that's, that's what we're trying. That's why we're trying to get tidbits from everybody because everybody's seen different stuff. And okay. Everybody's talk. That's why we want. We're talking to you to see if someone's talked to you about it. Okay. Obviously, you're a charge nurse, so you're in charge. So we got to see sure. if people did talk to you about it. Yeah. No. You know, Nobody told me that he fell, number one, or that he's vomiting, or that he's passed out, or that he's complaining. That's no. a, I'm not for sure if he was vomiting while he was down there, but that was the reason he was coming to their end for an ulcer and for. Okay, he came down originally, apparently, because he wanted to go to the ER. And you know, when they come off opiate, they want more opiate, so they say I need to go to the ER to get more drugs. Could be, I'm just saying, could no, be, I, I, I agree that he maybe wants more drugs. I, I and, mean, I've seen that there, which yeah, happened. You know, so we can't, I mean, if there's a reason to send him, we would have sent him if it's vomiting blood, or if it's not pouring blood, we would send him to the ER. Send him for a bleeding ulcer? If, if, he's, if he's bleeding, if, sure. If there, was, if there was an ulcer, is there with blood and, and he's he vomiting was, red blood? Yes, sure, yes. we would see him. So how about if that was happening in Fort South when you got sent down for that? that well, then the was, officer would tell us. And you know what we say is, well, if nurse, he is vomiting... The nurse is the one that sent him down for it because she was there. The pill nurse, I believe. Was the yeah, the pill nurse, yeah, she sent him down. Um, what, for vomiting? And his complaint was of ulcers. Of ulcers. Okay, so that's new to me. But usually, okay, what happens if they say on the pot, they're vomiting, we usually say, give them a red bag so we can see the vomit. Okay, that's all I want to do. I don't mind, you can come down, let me see the vomit. And when I see the vomit, I call the doctor and say, listen, he's got vomit, blah, 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 blah. And the doctor will say, send him out or start an IV, we're good at well, that. But that's what, and that's, this, this situation is before you Before came, I came on your t-shirt. So that's something that we're trying to look into to see what the, the circumstances are to be the charge nurse. So um, did they and I'm not assuming you know, was there blood in the vomit but is that what was said for coming down or was he saying that it was just complaining all season when he came down the blood and vomit was several days before that he was complaining about. Um, and while well, in custody. Yeah, yeah while in custody. Yeah, because he was given a uh, a shot by the doctor. Okay, that's a few knowledge. days. Yeah. Okay, that's right. a few days. And, and that's when he was in Burry South. Okay, okay, yeah. he was given a and I remember yeah, he was given. Uh, yeah, I, I think somebody told me they gave him Finnegan. Yeah, so he's been thrown up for a few days. I don't know about a few days. Yeah. I mean, you get Finnegan if you vomit once, we'll give you Finnegan. Right. You know, we don't know. Sure. 
I don't know. That's, I don't know. Sure, sure. I mean, I know my wife took it when she was pregnant. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Plenty of good stuff. But um, so when he came down, he changed his story. Apparently, that's just what I was told. I didn't read the chart. So when when you came on duty, did you have besides walking up to him and telling him to move back up? Mm -hmm. Did you have any contact with him? At no. Day? No, no, but I did hear, I did hear a noise in, I did hear a noise in room eight, you know, I did hear a noise in room eight, and I think Marshall, she did, maybe she did one or two rounds, I don't know, I can't remember, and I was, so you, you only heard a noise, I heard all the loudness, you know, cursing, and get this guy out, da 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 da, you know what I mean, and when I went over there, as I say, when I went over there, he was between the two bunks and he was lying. And this guy said, tell him to move away because he's thick. Yeah. Do you when not you interview the inmates? You don't interview them? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Everybody's been interviewed. So okay. Okay. Um, that's where we're kind of at this point. So, you had one more you there. Uh, on duty an hour. Okay, so, so you got moved just before seven. So you were you were on duty for an hour. Yeah. And then when you came on duty, mm -hmm. your pass on mm -hmm. uh, the night charge nurse. Yes. Or is that charge nurse do the pass on duty? Yes. yes. Okay. So we you, do the charge. We go check the drugs and then check pulses. Wait, you took drugs. We check the drugs in the lab room. Okay, to make sure that they were... That all the drugs were right. Right, so, not, so no one takes That you didn't use something right. in the night and didn't write it back. Okay, so, so so when you come on, you talk to the nighttime charge nurse, mm -hmm. and tell me what she told you again about it. So she told me that the guy in eight, Mr. Wingo, uh, she was going to put him in toe socks because he's been disruptive in the cell. And I said, oh, and she said, uh, he wants to go to the ER, I think he's drug seeking, he's opiate detox, he's IV heroin and he snorts heroin and he snorts cocaine. She said, I was going to put him in close ups and I said, okay, I will see how it is and if he needs to go, I'll do it. From that point, before so, that, before when you did that, did they, from that point back, do you have, had, did you have any knowledge of this inmate at all? No. Okay, so you didn't know, you had no dealings with any of his prior stuff at the jail, no. and then when do you guys start looking into each inmate's um, profile mm -hmm. as the day? So, because he would have been a new one. He would have been a new one. So, yeah. would that have been something to where the profile <coughs> would have been started for, or is another, so, since you're the charge nurses, there are other nurses that are, are involved, would there have been a nurse involved with him for that prior hour you, you were there? No, I don't think so, no. I mean, there's two nurses. The one does, um, she goes and does insulin as soon as we come on at six o'clock. She goes and does insulin, which leaves one other nurse, which was um, Shay. Shay was pulling meds. She was pulling meds. So she pulls meds between, I would say, six, seven, maybe quarter past seven, seven fifteen. Mm -hmm. She pulls meds, okay, puts them on the card, gets them ready. Um, what I normally do is, I usually start going through the chart, so when the doctor comes I can hand over to the doctor. I go through each one to see the day. But he's already on his detox. He was already a few days on his detox, I think. And then, um, so he was still on his detox as far as I know. And what time of the day would he, since he just came down, would he have seen the doctor? Did the doctors come in at what time? At about 9, 9.30 mm -hmm. on a Sunday. So would, they, would he have seen a doctor that day? He would have seen, no, we would have seen him first. We would have seen him when we did his vitals. So what happens is that about, as soon as she's pulled the meds and the, the second nurse comes back, we all wear my, wear my desk is, we do the vitals straight there. We give them a medication, do their vitals, any um, dressings that need to be done, any blood sugars that need to be checked for you right there. So and where the, where the officer sits, so it's right on that little corner. So right he, on didn't, he didn't make it to the no. med time for where you did He didn't make place. it to the vitals, which will be maybe half past 7, 7.30, mm -hmm. quarter to 8, we do it. So because he was moved at 7 o'clock, they moved him to the extension. So at a normal time, when you get in, your pass on, mm -hmm. and then you 
guys would start preparing your stuff mm -hmm. about 7 38 when or 8 or so when <coughs> the carts loaded for medical you i would say 7 30. 7 30. so at 7 30 uh -huh. you would then start we'll bring your cart and we'll start doing everything we start from one room and go right you through. Do all the way all the rights for you so at that time he did not have any of his life no, no. and then when you I've heard from prior when I was here for, but and you said that he was rallying. Mm -hmm. um, was he was he in your mind rallying or then um, for not to take vitals before he went down there, or would that have been say you guys leaving if someone's leaving your uh, thing to go to a pad? Is it a normal thing to take vitals? No, no so because normally they move them when they disrupt it. Do you understand? Okay. That arguing it wants to go to the ER and loud one. So, you take so that's not a well. You that's not a standard. How about how about if it's a uh, if it's a compliant patient before they leave and they move somewhere else? Is their vital state? Um, if they're moving him, I mean, he's a medical patient. Why would they be moving him to the annex and or the extension? They wouldn't move him because he's a medical patient. I mean, but but if I'm saying that on a normal stance, a person that's moving out of the moving out of the infirmary. Is that part of the, the um, process that they feel something would be vital before they left? No. If they're close up and they're cleared by mental health, they go straight to the point. We don't do their vitals. Is they cleared? Because they, they want to kill themselves. Right. So when they're cleared, they go straight, so straight about, to the point. So how about a medical patient? I mean, a medical patient, well, we do all the vitals. We do it once in the morning and once at night. How about if they're moving? If they, if no. they get cleared? Well, if they get cleared, so the doctor comes, goes around, clears them. The vitals have already been done in the morning. Unless they've got high blood pressure or there's some reason why we have to recheck it, then we do. No problem. Or blood sugar, um, we recheck it. I'm learning from this too, that's why there's sure. so many questions. Sure. To, to figure it out. So, so in, in my mind, are you, are you saying, when, I, I'm not doubting that you were okay. saying words and stuff. But in my mind, are you uh, thinking and being a little bit more precautionary of saying that he was rowdy because of the because of the nurse statement prior saying he was disorderly? No, I think I heard him. Right, I heard him being disruptive. I mean, being, dis being disruptive, but as in uh, as being loud talking. No, but as in um, cursing. Right. Right. No, that's, well, that's what I mean. Okay. Loud cursing. Um, was he was he fighting like? Uh, no. Was he he wasn't fighting at all. When he sat down. No, he wasn't fighting at all. So what I'm trying to get at is when the vitals were taken, either way, if he wasn't, if he was compliant. His vitals would have been done when it was no, his no, no. turn. Yes, I understand okay. that part, if he stayed in there. Yeah. But I'm saying that because what, what I'm looking at is with his vitals been taken, if he was leaving out of there. To go to the annex? Yes. No. They would only move him to the annex or to close up if he's disruptive. Right. But, that's, that's, what, what that's, that. that's what I'm trying to figure out. I was, I'm trying to figure out if there was if it's a, a, a standard oh, yeah. thing that happens when anybody leaves are vitals taken, yeah. or if it's you guys take your your vitals are taken at morning time and evening, In evening time. time right? Yeah. And this the doctor sees he's got high blood pressure. We check it. Do it again. Then we check it. Yeah. But if he's moving because he's disruptive and he's loud and he wants to go to the ER, no. In fact, we're scared to go near them because you never know they'll attack you or hit you. Right. Or whatever. Right. Oh, I don't know. But them. but that's what that, and that's why I keep because I'm trying to wrap. I'm trying to make sure I understand that if they leave out of there <laughs> at any circumstance, you're saying their vitals wouldn't be taken necessarily. It's only you take them at seven thirty in the morning, and yeah. probably what uh, seven thirty at night. I sure. assume it's seven or eight hundred times. Eight 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 as soon as it settles down and it can be, remember they would be done when it's compliant with Marshall. Do you understand? With the deputy, right. she's got other stuff going on, and if mental health is out, she can only bring out so many officers. Right. So we wait until she says, "I said to her, can we do? You know, can we do the vitals? Can we start?" And she'll tell me when everything's calm. Okay, I can bring two or three people out. She just brings two. I got it. Because I got kind of where I was trying to figure out where we were at. On. And tell me the, the the stuff on going into the pad is, is are they supposed to be checked when they go into the pad? You know what? If they okay, but normally no. 
because they weepy, they're agitated, some of them are aggressive, some, mm -mm, I don't, for me, I don't touch them. I really don't, unless they calm and they say, listen, okay, otherwise, no. no but and most of them refuse. They say, I don't want to talk, I don't want to answer your questions, just leave me alone. And I put them, will not answer questions, won't answer, because I've got to admit them. Mm -hmm. So everybody who goes into the bed, I've got to admit them. So, you understand? so the, would you say the only time that you would check on it? Make that went into a pad or something is if they're put in, in a chair or if they're or if they released, or if they're they're released. released. Okay. Okay. Other, <clears throat> otherwise the office unless they fight they get into a fight or they start bleeding or they vomit or they jump from the top or whatever they move so but otherwise so when he went into the pad from leaving from your guys's and to that extent of pad and he was nothing was going on different it's unnormal that it would be unnormal if he did get checked for vitals or checked on him because he's not in a chair. No, he won't be checked. If he's, okay. if he's taken from room 8 to that extension, he won't be checked. No, that is not the normal because they're moving him because he's disrupted. Okay? So, so the reason his vitals weren't taken is because he was disrupted? Sure. He wanted to go to the ER. And well, that goes against what we're what I was asking, because, because uh, it wasn't because he was disrupted. They moved him because he was disrupted. No, they and the guy. They listen. I'm not trying to. I'm okay. not trying to trick you. Okay. They his his vitals weren't taken mm -hmm. because he was disrupted. At yes. That time. Yes. They, they were. They were not taken because he was disrupted. Well, that's kind okay. of contradicting what we already okay. came about because. You were putting me under the understanding that vitals are taken at 7.30 in the morning. Yes. 7.30 at night. Yes, yes. So vitals weren't taken because he was disrupted. It's well, vitals was weren't taken on him that day because we hadn't started doing it, number one. That's where. Okay, we hadn't so started that's doing where it. That's yes. where I'm, I don't know if okay. you're taking it. Okay. Because vitals weren't taken because he was disruptive. Vitals are taken because he... 7.30 is when it happens, he was taken out because the vitals are taken when the nurse does his meds and they yes, come out and check Yes, 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 and everybody gets and the vitals. you guys do not check people's vitals when they are leaving the infirmary to go to, to the extension. extension. No. And then no. his vitals were not checked at the extension because no. that is a, not a normal thing for when they're putting no. him in there for that case. Yes, no. Okay, see, we were, okay. you were going... For the other you're on the disruptive okay. part, and okay. you've already told me that, so I'm, I want to clarify it to make sure. Okay. But it, that is what we just said is the correct way. Sure. I'm not sure. If that's I'm sure. Because okay. that was one of our, our, our things that we're looking at was what was the, where they're supposed to be vitals taken, where they're not. And you know, apparently there would have been vitals taken if he would have been in the dorm at that time, at the time of you guys going in. Well, he would have, if he stayed there, he would have had it done at 7.30. Mm -hmm. He would have had his vitals done like everybody else at 7.30. We give them, fill up their picture, give them their meds, and if they need blood sugars or wound care or anything, we do it all one time together. And tell me symptoms, symptoms and uh, habits and stuff of a decoxing opiate guy person. Okay, opiate guy. Um, they're agitated. They are drug seeking, okay? And they remind me of a cat in a cage. I think that's the best way to describe it. That they just wish that they could get out. They're agitated, they're aggressive, um, they're drug seeking, they want the drugs. I mean, sometimes they their blood pressure elevated, they can have you know, sweating, um, and they curse and they fight and they want what they want. Okay. And so when you were when you were uh, given the charge nurse thing, mm -hmm. you were not, were you told at all about an ulcer? No. With this guy? Mm -hmm. and, but what did they tell you? She was telling you about this guy. Because she's she like, said, this guy stood out. Okay, what was she did saying? It, did, he, did, it, this, did this guy stand out on her, her uh, pass on? It did, it did. Okay. Because she said to me, she was going to tell something, but she didn't. She said, I was going to put him in close ups because he, the whole night he's been cursing, saying he wants to go to the ER. And she said, uh, he's um, IV heroin, he's OB detox, IV heroin, snorts heroin, and snorts cocaine. I said, oh, and she said, all he wants to do is go to the ER. And she said, I think he's drug seeking. She said, I was going to put him in close up, but I didn't. 
And I said, okay, I will look at him, and if he needs to, I'll put him in close arms. I have a problem with him. But when you say that, is that your decision? Is that the charge nurse decision to put him in close up? Sure. If he's, if he's disrupted in the cell and he's going to cause trouble, move him out. Sure. Okay. Sure. Do you, what do you have to do to, to do the close up? Do you have to get. You have to fill out a form as to why you're putting him in close up and you explain disruptive um, fighting, causing trouble, move him. And then mental health sees him. Did someone fill out a form for him to go to the pad? No. No. Why, what's the difference between you? You know what? Um, I did not fill it out. No, we didn't fill out a form for him to go to the pad. But is there Marshals a... should have, or I should have, I suppose. But I didn't. Okay. So, so there should have been a form. There should have been a form that he was disrupted. And that's what would have been taken to the pad for sure. four minutes. Yeah. And is this, uh, is this something that you would... Uh, not that you have to talk with Watch Commander about this? No, no. You don't have to tell Watch Commander. No. Okay. Anybody can put them, if they're not compliant or they're fighting or that they're disruptive, put them in close ups. When their mental health sees them, and usually they refer him uh, to Dr. Hindash, give him on some medication, give him some Vistral or whatever, Benadryl to calm him down. Shifts. Yep, yeah, that's right. Was that we all? Six. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, so we have an autopsy as to why. What was the white stuff around his nose? I'm not the sure. The only one yeah. you saw there. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes, it's all still under investigation. So mm -hmm. they're doing the same thing we're doing, trying to figure out, you know, on the. It's an out. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Um, so. You never know when you'll hear anything. It all takes a little bit of time, you know. Uh, but you know, I had a busy day today. Or you know, like, uh, today hasn't been that bad. Let me see. We have Matt Bennett in the info. He's great. You know Matt Bennett? Oh, yeah. I used to work with him. So. Oh, he's fantastic. Yeah. Man. yeah, I used to work with him. I love him in the info. He's fantastic. He really is. Yeah. Good guy. He knows how to handle it, man. Yeah, he's been there with a while. Marshall, she's a bit new. Yeah, I was I was in the infirmary for a while when I was on shift four by myself and it's so Did you? So you yeah. know it. Come on, you know how it is. Oh yeah, I know that crowd is an infirmary. Yep. You know. And Carl, I don't think he's ever worked in for me, has he? I'm not sure. Yeah, he's, he was here way before me, so I don't know. He was yeah, he's a few years ahead of me, so Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But um so. hmm. Today or Friday, or you gotta come back? Mm -hmm. I come back tomorrow, Sunday. Okay. I'm sure it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and this week, Wednesday. It's not horrible. So you work mm -hmm. four and three, so you're kind of on a jail schedule too, like a four and three, or? No, we work 12 hours. But do you, like, but do you work four days at a time, and then? Four days. And three then days off. Three days off, and then mm -hmm. three days okay. on, four days off? Uh-uh. I do Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, every week, and usually every Wednesday as well. Okay. So who told, did they tell Marshall that he fell? I want to know who said he fell. Why'd they tell me he fell? Um, you, you know, think about when you're at your computer. You know, and the noise is getting on. on. Yeah. And the noise is getting on. I don't remember anybody tell me he fell. No. Or that he was bleeding, or that he was vomiting. Or anything like that. Yeah, not necessarily bleeding and vomiting, but you know, did your the short, you know, 
and not being able to breathe and having trouble breathing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He was loud. How, if you're loud, you have a problem breathing. You know what I mean? If you're loud and you're disruptive, how can you... I want to go to the ER. You know what I mean? I can't to see if it was loud. <coughs> That's why we moved him, because he was loud and disruptive. I was really moved him. He's got a bug. Yeah, I mean, we've watched the video, so we... Because it looked bad. I'd love to see it. Yeah. Does it show that he falls to the Oh, yeah. Several times. Yeah. Several times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Uh, and it shows him getting into the bunk, right? Into this car's bunk. It shows him moving back. To yeah, the bunk. because he can't. He can't stand up because he's he's so weak. No. And that's why he crawled back to his bed. No. Okay. Listen, he got up and walked to Marshall. Right. He got up and he walked to Marshall. He walked out of the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess I've seen all that. Yeah. yeah. And then he lays on the ground. Oh, he lay on the ground because he didn't want to get up. He lay on the ground. Is that after he was cuffed or before he was cuffed? He didn't want to get up. And they shot. And Gordon said, come on. I heard Gordon mm-hmm. say, come on, get up. Get up. You can move. And he got up. And then Gordon took him and he sat on the chair. And he was still loud. I don't know what he was saying there. I don't know what he was saying. He was still loud. And then Gordon then... Loud okay. like screaming? I want to go to the ER. You people don't so hear he was like screaming. Yeah, he was shouting. Yeah, I want to go to the ER. And I don't know what else he was saying. And then Major Harris came and they took him. Listen, I had a guy once who came from the annex. Sergeant Dragon was with me. Listen, he sat in the chair. He was laughing. He came. I don't know if you heard about him. He, he laughed coming to the infirmary. He said, in the chair. Sad. Very sad. Very sad. No. Oh, I'd have to know where he died from. That was, uh, and you, you talk to Major Harris. You talk to Major Harris that one. Um, I don't know. I've watched so much video. I'm sorry. Did I speak? No. I don't think I spoke to him at all. Okay. He spoke to Gordon and they took him out. Because he could have, let me see, they put him there. Uh, he would have come back to us once he settled down. I know, but. And he was calmer. But going to the pad, there would, there's supposed to be a form. There's supposed to be uh, as to why he's came to the pad. So why, mm-hmm. was, why wasn't that done? I know, I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Is, is, I really. Is that, is that uh, whose responsibility is that? I suppose it falls on me or Marshall. Why he went to the annex to structure. And then the time still trying to get time things. Why did when the guys being disruptive and we step with that not cause you to read this chart to find out what's going on? Uh, mm, 
no, at the time, I think you just handled the situation at the time as to what they're going to do with him. Well, I mean, that's, and, and what, what I'm getting at is because he's disruptive. What I see is he's disruptive mm -hmm. and he's acting out mm -hmm. sort of from the video, from me looking at it. I mean, he looked like he was actual pain, vacant or not. So, okay. But would that be something? For medically, like besides, I know. Did, did you have? Did you already have your mindset that he was detoxing? I, I knew he was detoxing. Yes. And because they said that, did that did that just pass that on from another, from that stuff? Well, yeah. from another medical emergency. In your mind, are you thinking that he's just detoxing? Did that change your mind as of being a medical or a true medical emergency? Because that's what it looks like is happening. Mm. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, because I mean, he's detoxing, he's on detox meds. Um, but he, him he, acting out. He um, had a. Because where I'm getting at is if I know we have cry wolf. It happens a lot. What's cry wolf? What's that mean? Well, like. Uh, he wants to go to emergency. Sure. Sure. So, sure. And sure. it happens. Sure. But we just we assume that that's what was wrong in, in, in actuality. That's not what was wrong with him. And so I'm just trying to figure out if you would have looked at the charge or the, the charge the, the sheet, and it came up that he had uh, prior. He was throwing up constantly. Um, he was giving vinegar and he was uh, complaining of an ulcer. And mm -hmm. would, would that be something that would look into where, okay, is he crying wolf, or do we need to send him out to, because he's acting up? I would act up if I was, if I was locked in a room. I would not say act up, I would, you, yeah. you don't know what um, I'm So, I would say I was warned, maybe, okay. <clears throat> he's acting out. So, I sort of expected him to act out, you know what I mean? You know, um, he wanted to go to the ER. Um, the nurse at night didn't think he needed the ER, okay? Um, and she was going to put him on close up, so I said, I did say I would handle it, okay? Um, and as I say, I knew it. Um, when I came out, he was loud. Um, and as I say, I only went there when he got into the other guy's up, okay? Told him to, and then um, this guy said, Move back here, move back. And then when he lay between us, when I went and told him to move back. But he didn't look, he didn't look like he was in distress to me. He followed command when I said, Go back. I said, Wingo, go back. And I still went like this with my hand, Go back to your bum. He went back, he scooted back. I mean, when he was standing up, he was hunched over, <coughs> walking around. I never that, saw okay. that. I never saw that. Yeah, he was hunched over. I never over. saw that. And, you know, but he got up to walk to Marshall when Marshall told him to come out. Okay? He came out, came out the door. Gordon told him to put his hands <coughs> on the window, which he did. And then he went down. He didn't want to get up. And Gordon told him to get up. Did he fall down? Or did he... No, I don't know. I don't know if he fell down. Or, or the, uh, I, I can't say that. Because I just heard Gordon telling him to get up. Was Gordon touching him when he fell down or when he went down? I don't know. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I didn't see that. Okay. Okay. All right. Call. They would later learn that Calvin died from a perforated ulcer. The police decided not to take any action towards Emmeline. The nursing board put her on probation for one year and let her keep her nursing license. Uh -huh.